Sephardic Jews in the Netherlands. Wikipedia article. Sephardic Jews in the Netherlands. As a result of the Alhambra Decree of 1492 and the Holy Office of the Inquisition, many Sephardim, Spanish and Portuguese Jews left the Iberian Peninsula at the end of the 15th century and throughout the 16th century in search of religious freedom. Some migrated to the newly independent Dutch provinces, which welcomed the Sephardic Jews. Many of the Jews who left for the Dutch provinces were crypto Jews, persons who had converted to Catholicism but continued to practice Judaism in secret. After they had settled in the safety of the Netherlands, many of them returned fully to the practice of the Jewish religion. Religious Identity and Community in Amsterdam The Jewish community of Amsterdam was self-governing, thus keeping the communal power in the hands of the merchant elite among the Portuguese Jews. The Passover Center of the Portuguese Jews, Amsterdam. Illustration circa 1733 to 1739 by Bernard Picard. The Passover Center of the Portuguese Jews, Amsterdam. Illustration circa 1733 to 1739 by Bernard Picard. Bernard Picard. Bernard Picard or Picard, born the 11th of June, 1673, died 8th of May, 1733 was a French draftsman, engraver, and book illustrator in Amsterdam with an interest in cultural and religious habits. Bernard Picard, artist of the Passover Center of the Portuguese Jews, Amsterdam, 1733 to 1739. The Passover Setter of the Portuguese Jews, Amsterdam, 1733 to 1739. Sephardim with inner African ancestry. Every Sephardi community where the Caribbean Sea laps ashore had some members who were of inner African descent. Many were the offspring of enslaved Africans. Some came direct from the Iberian Peninsula. Some few others had their Jewish heritage from West Africa and communities suppressed as long ago as the 12th century 
by the Al Muri Bhutan in the Al Muwahadun and the 15th century by Al Meg Heli, who instructed the Sudanese royalty across the entire Sahel that it is a meritorious act to destroy a synagogue. Nonetheless, the Inquisition uncovered Lasados smuggling Sudorima clear down to Angola. Also, uh, at this point, I would like to insert my opinions in, into this article, which is a really great article. Um, instead of the term enslaved Africans, the writer should have wrote enslaved Israelites. And the Inquisition uncovered the Lasado smuggling Sotorium. I would like to note that Sotorium were prayer books written in the language of Hebrew, that these Israelites, these Jews who were living in the west coast of Africa were hiding, concealing from the Spanish and Portuguese Inquisition. So pretty much, um, I just wanted to read the article as is, but I just wanted to insert those opinions. Sidereum prayer books. The Lesados were smuggling prayer books in West Africa down to Angola and West Central Africa from the agents of the Spanish and Portuguese Inquisition. The artwork of Bernard Picard illustrated what a family of Portuguese Jews in the Netherlands uh, look like when they were enjoying their Passover Seder or Passover meal. Now, this next article is to describe when these Netherland Jews moved or got readmitted or resettled into England. Wikipedia article, Resettlement of Jews in England. The resettlement of the Jews in England was an informal arrangement during the Commonwealth of England in the mid-1650s, which allowed Jews to practice their faith openly. It forms a prominent part of the history of the Jews in England it happened directly after two events. Firstly, a prominent rabbi, Manasseh ben Israel, came to the country from the Netherlands to make the case for Jewish resettlement. And secondly, a Spanish new Christian, a supposedly converted Jew who secretly practiced his religion, merchant, Antonio Robles requested that he be classified as a Jew rather than Spaniard during the war between England and Spain. Now, in the article, The Resettlement of the Jews in England, which they have been living or a group have been living in the Netherlands at the time. We're going to go directly to the chapter of Manasseh ben Israel petition. Manasseh ben Israel petition. Manasseh ben Israel, son of Samuel, had arrived in England, accompanied by trader David Domito in 1653 to investigate the possibility of the resettlement of the Jews. In May 1665, he was sent back to Amsterdam in order to try to convince his father to visit England. The rabbi came to England in September 
1655 with three other local rabbis where they were lodged as guests of Cromwell. Cromwell was ruling the country at the time of England. There he printed his humble address to Cromwell. When Ben Israel began his stay in London, it is reckoned that there were about 20 new Christian families living in the city. New Christian, basically these were, these were Jews who were converted to Christianity. So at this time, they were not allowed to openly practice their customs. Okay, let's go back to the article. As a consequence, a national conference was summoned at Whitehall in the early part of December, which included some of the most eminent lawyers, clergymen, and merchants in the country. The lawyers declared no opposition to the Jews residing in England, but both the clergymen and merchants were opposed to readmission, leading Cromwell to stop the discussion to prevent an adverse decision. Nevertheless, some change to official policy must have occurred because the diarist John Evelyn wrote in his diary on 14th of December, now were the Jews admitted. Ben Israel stayed in England until 1657, during which time he met and engaged with a number of influential people. Although he did not achieve a legal ruling on the resettlement of the Jews, his presence gave prominent Englishmen a positive impression of learning and virtue among Jews. The artwork of Bernard Picard left a memorial of what Portuguese Jews who lived in the Netherlands appeared or physically appeared. Now, let's go to another eyewitness who described England's Jews around the time of Manasseh's Ben Israel petition to allow Jews to resettle back into England. The Jewish Pirates of the Caribbean How a generation of swashbuckling Jews carved out an empire in the New World in their quest for treasure, religious freedom, and revenge by Edward Critzler. Charles' treatment of Jews in his realm was consistent with the tolerance he expressed in the Declaration of Breda. London's Jews no longer having to disguise themselves or hide their wealth gathered each Sabbath in the rickety first floor synagogue in Creech Church Lane. Their place in society was endorsed by John Green Haug, a prominent Christian who, having visited the synagogue in April 1662, observed in a letter to a friend, When I was in the synagogue, I counted about a hundred Jews, all merchants, not one mechanic person of them. Most were rich in apparel with various jewels glittering, for they are the richest jewelers of any. They are generally black and may be distinguished from Spaniards or native Greeks. Their hair a more perfect raven black. They have a quick piercing eye and strong intellect. Several 
of them are comely, gallant, proper, gentlemen. I know many who I saw daily upon the exchange. London's Jews are generally black. Now for another eyewitness account of Portuguese Jews, we can head to the book, A New Voyage to Italy, with curious observations on several other countries as Germany, Switzerland, Savoy, Geneva, Flanders, and Holland, together with useful instructions for those who shall travel there. Volume 1, Issue 1, by Maximilian Missan, 1714. A New Voyage to Italy, page 139. Tis also a vulgar error that the Jews are all black. For this is only true of the Portuguese Jews. Portuguese Jews are black. It's really easy to understand the literature written on the Jews if you can understand the specialized terms that scholars use to describe Jews. In the previous article that we were reading, there were basically two terms that were used to describe Jews. Sephardi and Lansados. The Sephardi are the Lansados. In the book, Creoles revisited language contact, language change, and postcolonial linguistics, edited by Nicholas G. Faraclas and Sally J. Delgado, as another example to understand the different names and terms to describe the same people. In this case, it's the Sephardim. The Sephardim, not just financiers, but also degradados and lanzados. The Sephardi are lanzados. Different names to describe the same people. The Sephardi are also called the Lansados. Another example can be found in the book. The Portuguese in West Africa, 1415 to 1670, a documentary history edited by Marlon Newitt. Lesados, who were the founding fathers of Atlantic Creole culture. Lesados, founders of Atlantic Creoles. So now Lesados, are also known as Atlantic Creoles. Sephardim, Lasados, Atlantic Creole, Ladinos. These are terms that have described African Americans people of color in the Caribbean, Central and South America. In the book, The African Americans, Many Rivers to Cross by Henry Louis Gates Jr. and Donald Lacavoni. 
the first large group of slaves to arrive in lands that would become the United States. These black slaves may have been Atlantic Creoles or Ladinos. So the first black slaves are described as Atlantic Creoles or Ladinos. Historian Ira Berlin wrote the book, Many Thousands Gone, The First Two Centuries of Slavery in North America. A direct quote from his book, Atlantic Creoles might bear the features of Africa, Europe, or the Americas in whole or part. We can see Ira Berlin try to give you a visual on how these people peoples appeared from the beginning of the transatlantic slave trade the enslaved had the so-called triracial type of the so-called Africans Europeans and the American Indians in mixture or combination I'm gonna give a few more examples to show how his statement concerning Atlanta Creoles might bear the features of Africa, Europe, or the Americas in whole or in part is an accurate statement. Sex and Race, a history of white, Negro, and Indian miscegenation in the Two Americas by J.A. Rogers, Volume 2, The New World. Latin America, most illustrious figure, Simon Bolivar, liberator of five South American countries and one of the most colossal figures of history, J.A. Rogers. Sex and Race, Volume 2, The New World, by J.A. Rogers. This mixing of races is true of Anglo-Saxon America and Latin America alike, but particularly so of Latin America. What Simon Bolivar, liberator of five South American countries, one of the most colossal figures of history, said of Venezuela is true of all that region south of the Rio Grande. He said, we must face the fact that our race is not European. It is rather a composite of Africa and America than an emanation of Europe. For Spain itself ceased to be European by its African blood, its institutions and character. It is impossible to determine exactly to what human family we belong. Most of the Indians were annihilated. The European has been mixed with the Indian and the African. We were all born of the bosom of the same mother, but our fathers differing in origin and blood are foreigners, and we all differ visibly in color of skin. Spain itself ceased to be European by its African blood. Significant words. Words to be remembered whenever we think of the earliest settlers of the New World. Bolivar, in addition to his wide knowledge of Spanish history, had lived in Spain, had seen the racial composition of its people. Sex and Race, Volume 2, The New World. In other words, the discoverers and the earliest trailblazers of the New World were already mixed. A people 
which were largely mulatto, if you will, on their arrival in 1492. Mulatto, mulatto is a racial classification to refer to people of mixed African and European ancestry. Its use is considered outdated and offensive. Mulatto, etymology. It originated in the Arabic term muwadlad, which means a person of mixed ancestry. Muwadlad literally means born, begotten, produced, generated, brought up. With the implication of being born and raised among Arabs, but not of Arab blood. Muwadlad is derived from the root word walad. Direct Arabic transliteration, wal lam dao, and colloquially Arabic pronunciation can vary greatly. Walad means descent, offspring, scion, child, son, boy, young animal, young one. Muwalad, a Jew born, raised among Arabs, but not of Arab blood. Juan Pareja Mulatto Turning to modern anthropology, one finds confirming evidence. Ratziel says, the entire Semitic and Hermetic population of Africa has a mulatto character, which extends to the Semites outside of Africa. Source, Sex and Race, Volume 1, J.A. Rogers. An English printed usage of mulatto dates to at least the 16th century. The 1595 work, Drake's Voyage, first used the term in the context of intimate unions producing biracial children. The Oxford English Dictionary defined mulatto as one who is the offspring of a European and a black. This earliest usage regarded black and white as discrete species with the mulatto constituting a third separate species. Hybrid hate, conflations of anti-Semitism and anti-black racism from the Renaissance to the Third Reich. Tudor Parfit. The reason I find this quote so interesting is J. Rogers quotes the same authority. So this is why I went to hybrid hate. Mulatto was a, a term, a well-known term that was used to describe Jews throughout history. So this is a direct quote from the book Hybrid Hate. The Semites belong to the mulatto class, a transition stage between black and white. Frederick Ratzel, 1844 to 1904. Semitic people, Semites, Semitic peoples, or Semitic culture was a term 
for an ethnic, cultural, or racial group. First used in the 1770s by members of the Göttingen School of History, this biblical terminology for race was derived from Shem, one of the three sons of Noah in the book of Genesis, together with the parallel terms Hamites and Japhethites. Merriam-Webster Dictionary Semitic Under the third definition Jewish Semitic is derived from the term Shemitic and it really applies to anyone who is a lineal descendant of Shem but in the modern terminology it's used to mean Jewish Indeed, it is the Portuguese who, with the Moors, Venetians, Genoese, and other mongrels of the Mediterranean, were the pioneers in the world travel and exploration that led up to Columbus. Page 5. Since then, the Spaniards, Portuguese, and Italians, even of the 19th century, had so much visible Negro strain. It is reasonable to suppose that among the first explorers and colonizers of the New World, there must have been many individuals of Negro descent. Although there is little mention of them as such, the reason is that mulattoes were regarded as white. When a European said and still say Negro, he means an unmixed black man. For instance, on Columbus' third voyage, only one Negro, Diego, is mentioned. And in the list of noblemen and gentlemen of quality who accompanied Balboa to the Pacific, only one Negro, Nofolo de Olano, is named. And that does not mean there was not other near blacks on those voyages. Also, Pietro Alonso, the pilot of Columbus flagship on the first voyage, is mentioned in the Liberietto, the original count of the voyage, which was published in 1521, four times as a Negro. It is not improbable either that Columbus was of mixed blood. His complexion was olive, his cheekbones were high, and his lips, as seen in the Yanez portrait, was a full Negroid kind. This portrait, the oldest of all, was thought the most characteristic of him by his hair, the Duke of Veragua. Columbus offers his services to the king of Portugal, Chidawiski, 17th century, source, Wikipedia. The arrival of the Spaniards in the New World in 1492 started at once the miscegenation of these fair and these dark-skinned Europeans with the Indians. Thus, it may be said in the most positive manner that the first mothers of persons of European ancestry born in the New World 
the Creoles were Indians. This is perhaps wholly true also of the mothers of those of African descent. First mixing of white men, some of whom had a Negro strain. And this is from Sex and Race, Volume 2. And Boulevard himself said frankly that Venezuelans could not consider themselves a white people, not only because they have mixed so freely with Indians and Negroes, but that their ancestors, the Spaniards, were not white to begin with. He ridiculed the idea of superiority because of Spanish birth and laughed at Sangro Azul or Blue Blood. Spanish proverb, Africa, and Pisa, and Los Pyrenees. Africa begins in the Pyrenees. Wikipedia article, Pyrenees. The Pyrenees is a mountain range straddling the borders of France and Spain. The Pyrenees and mountain range between Spain and France. Cast the paintings, 18th century Latin America. But this also includes the Caribbean, North America. This is a wonderful, uh, dynamic um, look into the past on what type of people populated the Americas. That Spanish proverb was revealing. Spain and North African populations 
are similar when it comes to physical appearance. But the same could be also said of southern France and certain other parts of France. Thomas Alexander Dumas, General and Revolutionary France. Pierre Laval, ex-premier of France. Pierre Laval, 1913, when he was a lawyer in France. Pierre Laval, ex-premier of France. Early life. Pierre Jean-Marie Laval was born on the 28th of June, 1883, in Chateldon, near Vichy, in the northern part of Avogny. The son of Gilbert Laval and Claudine Tournier, his father worked as a cafe proprietor and postman. The family was comfortably off compared to the rest of the village. The cafe also served as a hostile and a butcher shop, and Gilbert Laval owned a vineyard and horses. The last name Laval was widespread in the region at that time. The family branch was commonly named Laval Tournier, and his father had himself called Baptiste Moran. Charles Ringel, American politician. Charles Ringel, Charles Bernard Ringel, born June 11, 1930, is an American politician who was a U.S. representative for districts in New York from 1971 to 2017. A member of the Democratic Party, he was the second longest serving incumbent member of the House of Representatives at the time of his retirement, serving continuously since 1971 as its most senior member. He was also the Dean of New York's Congressional delegation. Ringel was the first African American chair of the influential House Ways and Means Committee. He is also a founding member of the Congressional Black Caucus. Founding members of the Congressional Black Caucus, 1971. Charles Ringo Early Life, Military Service and Education. Ringo was born in Harlem in New York City on June eleventh, nineteen thirty. His father, Ralph Ringo, was from Puerto Rico and came to New York in 1914, 
while his African-American mother, Blanche Mary Walton Ringel, was from New York City and had family roots in Virginia. <laughs> 